Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. I hope that you are all good. In today's video, we're gonna be doing a Day of the Dead inspired set of nails. And I'm also gonna be showing you guys how I encapsulate my foils in acrylic. So I really hope you all enjoy watching. Now today's video is slightly different as I have left in tip application and how I apply my thin clear acrylic base. Now after I recorded this video, I did have a request on how to show how to size up tips, but I had already recorded this video, so I don't include that in this video, but I will do another video soon and I will show you guys how I personally size up my tips. But for today, I'm just showing you guys how I apply them. So when you are applying your tips, you do only need a small amount of glue. I'm probably using a little bit more here than I would if I was working on myself, because I do find that tips are a little bit harder to stick on the practice hand than they are when I'm working on my own nails. I think. I don't know, I think it's something to do anyway with the fact that when you're applying your nail tips on yourself or a client, you have a little bit of warmth from the client's hands. So the glue dries a lot quicker. We're on the practice hand and the fact that my room is a little bit chilly. I feel as though the glue dries quite slowly. So I seem to find a little bit more works better than a little bit less. But nonetheless, as you can see, I'm just gonna apply a small amount of glue, taking it out to the wings of the tip. And then I'm just gonna slide that tip down the nail so I can get it in a good position, trying my best to make sure it's a straight to the natural nail bed and then I'm just going to press this down now as I said the room I'm working in is quite chilly so it does take a little bit longer for the glue to dry but you will find most nail glues only take a couple of seconds to dry so you don't necessarily get much time to play around and position your tip so you want to try and get it in position as quickly as possible then you're going to want to hold it there I like to rock the tip from side to side a little bit just to make sure that that glue has distributed evenly. And then once they are all stuck down, we're ready to come in and trim them down to the size that you want. So taking my tip cutters, I'm gonna support the natural nail bed here and then trim the length down. You wanna support the natural nail bed as trimming the tip can put a little bit of pressure on the nail. They are only glued down. So you always want to make sure you're kind of supporting the natural nail and your tip. And then we're gonna cut these down from a long stiletto shape to a more medium long tapered square. Then we're gonna come in and apply our thin clear base. So as you can see, I picked up a small bead of clear acrylic. I'm pressing that out from side to side and tapping it up to get a nice neat cuticle area. And then I'm pulling that product down to cover the rest of the nail. And as you can see, I'm really thinning it out. It only needs to be a thin base. You don't wanna to add too much thickness or bulk to the nail, especially if you're gonna be applying nail art and then encapsulating it. Because if you started off with a thick base, then overall you're gonna end up with quite a thick length, thick nail. Now, of course, a thin clear base is totally optional. If you was just building up a set to then put gel polish down on the top or doing a full one color set of nails with a strength powder, then you wouldn't necessarily need to do a thin clear base. But I prefer to have a clear base down if I'm doing any kind of nail art. It will also protect the nails, the natural nail beds from any staining if you are using dark pigmented colors as well. Personally for myself as well, I always find, especially again when I'm doing any kind of nail art, that I prefer having a clear base down because clear seems to offer the best adhesion. So I get a lot less lifting than what I used to since always popping down a thin clear base. But of course, this is one of those things that is just preferential. Now on the Glamalears, I like to pop down a thin clear layer as I find it just makes it a seamless blend between the fake nail bed tip and then the tip that we've applied for our extension. So that's why I still do it on my Glamour Liz. I feel as though it just gives me a good base to work on and come in and do a design. So onto that last nail again, we're gonna pick up a small bead of acrylic, pushing it up towards that cuticle area, and then I'm dragging and wiping a lot of it down the nail so that it does only leave that thin layer of acrylic. This is where you could now come in and file these nails into shape if you wanted to, which is what I normally do when I'm working on myself. But when I'm working on the practice hand, it is a little bit trickier to file compared to working on real nails. So I tend to skip a file in the base and I would just do my finished violin. So now we're gonna jump on to doing our design. So I'm 
working, my clear and my pink acrylic today are from Young Nails, but this particular black is from Model Ones. And I'm just gonna pop a thin layer of this down and blend it back. Again, I'm keeping this super, super thin because we're not actually gonna see this black in the set of nails. I'm only popping this down as a base for my foils. So I'm just gonna pop a thin layer down, take it from side to side and then pull it down towards the tip of the nail. Then I'm gonna flick my brush into reverse and blend that back just so there's not a harsh line or where that black ends. Whenever you're doing anything that's got an ombre or a fade effect, then you wanna make sure you're blending everything back. Now this black is quite pigmented, but as you can see here, it looks quite sheer. That's just because I'm working with it quite thin and quite wet. If you wanted it to look a little bit more pigmented, you wouldn't necessarily need to work with it as thin and as wet as what I am here. But I just simply want this down as a base for my foils. Whenever I'm working with any full cover foils, I like to have a matching color underneath. That way, if there's any gaps or imperfections in your foil, it's not gonna be as noticeable. So as you can see, picking up a small bead, wiping off my brush, and then I'm just pulling that down towards the tip of the nail, cleaning off my brush again. When you're working with colors like black, you wanna try and keep your brush as clean as possible. So I will wipe it off quite a lot. And I will also dip it into my monomer without fully absorbing it, just taking a little bit of monomer on the tip of my brush and then wiping that off as well. This helps keep pigmented colors from your brush and keeps your brush a lot cleaner. So now that we've got all the black applied, we want to wait for this to fully set before we come in and apply our foils. So for this set, I've got this gorgeous foil. This one is from Charlie's Nail Art, but I no longer see it on the website. So I don't think it's available anymore, but I will still leave the Charlie's Nail Art website linked in the description box below because she has some absolutely amazing foils to choose from. So I'm gonna come in first of all and I'm gonna apply my foil gel and I'm only really applying this to wherever I've applied my black acrylic. I'm not worried about creating a nice straight line. Again, you want it to blend back because you're going for that faded effect, but you do want to make sure that you've got full coverage of your foil gel over the entire tip part of the nail. Keeping it again, a nice thin layer. You don't need to apply your foil gel thickly. And then once we have finished applying that, I'm gonna pop it in to cure for 30 seconds. And then I'm gonna take my foil and press it down onto the nail. Now, when it comes to pressing and rubbing the foil, I like to use a combination of a silicone tool and my thumb and finger. I kind of just find the silicone tool helps work out any of the initial creases, but using your thumb and finger, you're able to tell a little bit more how much or how good that foil has contacted with the foil gel. And then once I'm happy with the application, I'm gonna peel it off slowly so that if it does need to be reapplied, I can lay it back down and reapply it. So again, like you'll see here, I'm placing it down on the nail, making sure it's got good contact with that foil gel, and then I'm rubbing out any creases, and then especially I'm gonna rub along the tips of the nail as well, as that's where I usually find foils can be a bit tricky. So I'm making sure that's made good contact, and then if it hasn't, you're gonna come in and do a little bit more rubbing, and then I'm gonna slowly peel this back, so then I can push it back down if needed, like I did here. And then I was pretty happy with how this foil covered. So I went for this foil because I wanted to do a Day of the Dead inspired set of nails. So Day of the Dead is a holiday or celebration that's predominantly celebrated in Mexico on the 1st and 2nd of November. So immediately after Halloween. But from what I've read, it's about celebrating the life of lost loved ones. And I thought that was a really lovely holiday. It seems a lot more joyful than the spooky side that we have for Halloween, but it seems an absolutely a lovely holiday. So I wanted to do a set of nails inspired by that. And when I was looking at a lot of the pictures for Day of the Dead, it's all very colorful there's lots of sugar skulls and florals looking through my kit this was the closest sort of thing I had and I'm going to also add on some glitters and nail art as well sorry some glitters and flakies to the foils as well so it makes them look a little bit more colorful so here we have finished applying 
the foils I did just have to push my tips back in a little bit because all of that rubbing it kept making my tips move around but as you can see that's applied pretty good we're now going to come in and seal in the top coat sorry sealing the foils with our top coat I can't get my words out today it's been a bit of a long day but basically I'm going to seal in the foils because we're going to be coming over the foils with glitters and acrylic and sometimes the monomer on your acrylic or with your acrylic can make your foils melt so kind of like how acetone would make them melt the monomer can have that same reaction to the foil it can cause them to start melting away and dispersing so by adding in that layer of top coat you're protecting your foil from your monomer so we're going to pop a thin layer of this down and then we're going to pop this in to cure and then i have these beautiful green mylar pieces from Charlie's Nala and then I've got these glittery flaky pieces that we're going to add as well I was going to add in some fine black glitter but I decided not to because I kind of liked the effect that it gave off just using the mylar and flakies so that was why I decided not to add in my glitter so to apply those mylar pieces I'm going to take a small wet bead of clear acrylic just wash it down roughly where I want those mylar pieces to go and then I'm going to set those mylar pieces down into the wet glitter now the main thing here is you want to make sure that those pieces are lying nice and flat on the nail so that they're not sticking up so I kind of like to place them down and then as the acrylic is setting if there are any pieces that are sticking up I will just press them down with my brush so once I'd applied the mylar pieces Pieces. I'm just coming in with some gold flakies now and just placing them amongst that mylar and then I also on some of the nails will place them around the skulls and things like that flakies are really easy to apply I will show you guys the pot in the moment I move it into shot so you guys can see but they are really really thin so you can place down larger pieces or smaller pieces depending on the ones you have but if you brush them over with your brush they kind of disperse a little bit and break up so they're really great for adding into these full cover foils because they're just going to add a hint of sparkle into the foil here and there and that's one of the reasons why I love encapsulating my foils because it means you can add some sparkle to your foil and then it's all encapsulated in the acrylic so you've got a nice smooth finish now at the end so we're going to do exactly the same on all of the nails so I'm just placing down my mylar pieces and then coming in with my flakies up at the area where the foil meets the natural nail bed area i'm trying to blend it out a little bit we are going to come over the top with our cover pink acrylic and blend down so i did want some of those glitters and flaky pieces sorry not glitters i keep saying glitters i mean mylar when i say glitters i want some of those mylar pieces and flake pieces to be hidden under our pink acrylic so i want to make sure there's not a too harsh line where they end so it doesn't look too blocky it kind of all fades back but i also want to make sure that you are still able to see some of that sparkle so i'm bringing them down the foil a little bit also here this is where if you did have any imperfections in your foil you could cover them up sometimes you will find certain foils no matter what you do just do not cover a hundred percent so that's why i love adding in some glitter because if you have got any areas where your foil hasn't applied perfectly you can kind of cover it and minimize how it looks with some glitters or some flakies mylar whatever your chosen nail art is i was really happy with how this foil applied and the fact that we've got a black base layer down as well does help minimize if there was any little cracks in the foil or any areas that hadn't fully covered. Now, if you feel as though your mylar and flake pieces aren't fully set in place, then you can come over them with a wash of acrylic. But I did leave mine to dry and I did feel as though they were fully stuck in place. So we're now going to move on to applying our cover pink. Now, this I believe is called cover pink. It's a beautiful pink core color from Young Nails. But I will double check the name of it and leave it in the description box below. But this was the color I chose to use for my nail bed area. It's a really, really pretty soft opaque pink but I find it really really blendable so it's great for when you're wanting to do any kind of ombre or fade because it blends out absolutely beautifully now I decided to do my blend in two beads just because I didn't want to cover up those glitter pieces too much so with my first bead of acrylic I focused on getting a nice soft blend and then with my second bead of acrylic I've built up the strength and structure for my apex area and the coverage on my nail bed area a little bit more 
So coming in again, I'm gonna take a small bead, I'm pressing into it and pushing up into that cuticle area. Using the very tip of my brush, I'm getting a nice, neat cuticle line and trying to get as close to that cuticle as possible. Then I'm gonna press this bead down, kind of like to thin it out like we did with our thin clear base. And then I'm just pulling it down over that line where our glitter and mylar pieces end. And I'm kind of just trying to create a nice soft blend. Like I said, I didn't wanna cover these up too much. I just wanted that semi hidden look. Then with our second bead of acrylic, I'm gonna place that down, leaving a majority of it where it is, just tapping it ever so slightly up into the cuticle area, and then just blending the top of it down again so we've got that nice soft blend. You really don't wanna pull this down too far because then it's gonna make your foil not look as clear, if that makes sense. It's kind of look, gonna look as though it's got a wash of pink over the top of it. So you don't wanna take your acrylic down further than that blend area. So as you can see here, I'm never pulling my brush all the way down the nail. I'm just pulling it over the area where the glitter and mylar pieces are, and then lifting my brush off. Same again when we apply that second bead, pushing it up into the cuticle area, predominantly leaving this bead there in that apex area because we're not gonna be encapsulating the area where we've applied the pink acrylic. So we wanna make sure we're building up our strength and structure for the apex area and then blending it down. If you do feel as though you bring it down too much and cover up more of the mylar or foil than you want to, then you can clean off some of that acrylic using your wet brush. Now, when you are working up near that cuticle area and applying products in the cuticle area, you wanna make sure you're tilting your finger down Downwards. I tend not to point my Glamalis hand down too much because then you can't really see what I'm doing on the camera, if that makes sense. But when I'm working on myself, you will see that I tilt my hand down quite a lot whenever I'm applying acrylic in that cuticle zone. This is because you don't want your acrylic to run back and flood your cuticle area. So if you tilt the finger downwards, the acrylic is naturally gonna flow downwards. You're then able to push it up towards that cuticle area get a nice neat cuticle area without having to worry about flooding or touching the cuticles. So once we had finished applying our cover pink, we're ready to come in and encapsulate. Now, like I said, I don't have to encapsulate all the way up to that pink. I don't have to encapsulate to build up any strength or structure in that pink area because we've already done that with our pink acrylic. With my clear acrylic, I'm basically encapsulating the fade, the foil, the nail art that we've applied. I'm building up the strength and structure for the rest of the nail. So as you'll see here, I've done that in two beads just to make sure that I've got enough thickness throughout the nail, making sure that there's enough thickness at the tip and down the spine of the nail, but I haven't got to take that all the way up to the cuticle area. So moving on, I always like to wipe over the nail with my wet brush. I find this just helps my clear acrylic flow down the nail nicely. Then I'm gonna pick up a medium sized bead, apply it basically where we've created that fade. I'm gonna blend it back into the pink acrylic and then walk this down towards the very tip of the nail. Kind of just walking it, patting and pressing it. You don't wanna to pull too much of it down because you want to leave a lot of it where it is because you're building up the thickness here of the nail. We don't want a too thick or bulky nail, but we do wanna make sure that there's enough thickness there that if the nails were being worn by yourself or by a client, they're not gonna break or snap. Then I like to come in with another small bead at that tip area and blend that back just because I don't like having a too thin tip especially when the nails are this long if you have sculpted nails or if you've got more of a c curve then they can be a little bit thinner because the strength will come from the c curve but working with these particular tips they are quite flat so especially when I'm wearing them on myself I like to make sure I'm building up enough thickness that we're not gonna have any breakages. They're not super thick. I don't know if you're able to see, but once we have done the finished filing, they still are overall quite thin, but they've got the strength and thickness that's needed at that apex area and down the spine of the nail. So when I'm working with my clear acrylic, I always like to make sure that I'm pressing my brush into my monomer, removing all of the bubbles from my brush so that I'm not adding any bubbles into my clear acrylic. This is gonna give you a nice crystal clear finish. So you'll see that I press my brush down into the monomer and it releases any bubbles that might be in the brush. Then I'm gonna wipe off some of that excess monomer and then go in and pick up my powder. I have had a request on my channel to do a bead pickup video or a acrylic ratio video. So I will try and get that done soon. I just need to think about a few things that I wanna include in it and plan it a little bit more so that I can 
not teach you guys, but share your share with you guys how I do my bead pickup anyway. So hopefully I'll have that video up on the channel soon. Once I have finished applying all of my clear acrylic, I always like to check now so from all angles, come in and apply any additional acrylic if it's needed. Like on this now here, I had a little bit of a dip where I hadn't applied my acrylic properly. So I just come in with another small bead of acrylic to make sure that that was nice and smooth. Now off camera, I did do all of the filing, shaping and buffing, and then I cleaned away all of the dust. So we're ready now to come in and top coat. Now top coating on a set of nails like this, is one of my absolute favorite things to do because they look all dull and then you come in and apply your top coat. And again, we're gonna be able to see all of the sparkliness from the mylar pieces come through and then all of the foil. Now this particular top coat is from Young Nails and it is a little bit thicker than some of the top coats I own, but it gives off such a beautiful glass finish to the nails. I do find it a little bit harder to apply. It kind of, it's, it's a little bit thicker, but it's not like a rubber top coat thickness, but it's such a beautiful top coat. I love it on myself because I find it gives off a really chip resistant finish. So I'm just gonna apply a thin coat of this to all of the nails. Like I said, it's a little bit thicker. So when I say I'm applying a thin coat, you can kind of just see I'm really working that product into the nail. One of the thing I love about this top coat as well is if you have any scratches left on the nail from filing, this kind of thin, fills them in and it leaves you with a super crystal clear finish, especially over dark nails like this. I have left a clip at the end so you'll see a little bit more close up. Here I did have a little bit of fluff or something stuck in my top coat so I was going over it a few times to get it out. I think you'll end up seeing me doing it on a couple of the nails because I took the little bit of fluff off the nail but it was still stuck in my brush so it was really annoying. But like I said, I'm just gonna add a thin coat of this to all of the nails and then we're ready to pop them into cure and I've left a picture and a clip of the finished result at the end of the video. So this is the last effectively Halloween, even though it's Day of the Dead, but a bit more of a spooky set of nails that I'll have up on my channel. We're gonna full on move on in to the autumn nails before we're hit with Christmas and winter nails. So do keep an eye out on my channel for the next few autumn sets of nails that I have to share with you guys. And as always, if you do have any requests, please do pop them in the comments below. I do keep note of them and I do try and fit them in with any other videos I have recorded. So this guys was the finished result, by the way. I absolutely loved how they turned out. I loved that hint of gold in amongst the mylar and with the skulls, I thought they looked super, super pretty. So I really hope you all enjoyed watching. If you did enjoy today's video, then please do give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment below. And of course, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, I would absolutely Absolutely love it if you did. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Lots of love. Take care. Bye bye.